There's an old joke uh, about a Chinese man in a bar who seeks revenge against a Jewish drunk who's blamed him for the attack on Pearl Harbor. That was Japanese, you imbecile. I'm Chinese. But the Jewish man insists. Chinese, Japanese, what's the difference? The Chinese man counters by blaming the Jews for sinking the Titanic. That's ridiculous. The Titanic hit an iceberg. <laughs> iceberg, Goldberg. What's the difference? <laughs> there is a difference, and I can prove it. When I was seven, and my sister Lisa was nine, our mom became a contestant on Jeopardy. To get on the show, you had to pass this difficult knowledge test, and you had to do it in person, in a room, with other potential contestants. And most of the game shows were filmed in New York City, a train ride from where we lived on Long Island. We were so proud of my mom. Lisa and I could hardly contain our excitement when we learned she was going to take us to a TV studio. I, I always thought TV just happened, you know, right there inside the TV. <laughs> I mean, I knew people didn't actually live inside the television, but I, I didn't quite understand how they came to be there. A signal broadcast picked up by an antenna. But I couldn't wait to see how the whole thing was done. We loved having a smart mom. I couldn't wait for her to win more money on Jeopardy than my second grade classmate, Debbie Royal's mom, had won on the show Concentration. <laughs> Debbie thought she was so smart because... Her mom was smart, so I couldn't wait for my mom to show everybody how smart I was. <laughs> when we got to the studio, the taping of that day's show was about to begin. Mom said that every contestant had to watch a show being taped, though I didn't understand where they put the tape and why. A, a man came out and explained that we should applaud whenever the giant applause sign lit up. As audience members go... I should rank right up there with the best clappers of all time. In fact, my attention completely drifted from the actual show, so I'd be ready to clap when prompted. <laughs> now, after the alleged taping, the audience cleared out, and my mom was taken to a room in the back for the knowledge test. Lisa and I walked onto the stage to play our own pretend game of Jeopardy. At some point, we picked up magic markers next to our microphones that the contestants used back then to write their final Jeopardy answers onto a, a small white tablet. And once the white tablets were filled, we wrote, Go Mom! and Michael is the Greatest! and other silly encomiums on the front and sides of the podium. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> the next thing I remember was loud screaming from the stage manager. Whose fucking kids are these? They've written all over the set magic markers. See, they used indelible magic markers, never anticipating mayhem my sister and I were capable of when left to our own devices. <laughs> when my mom emerged from backstage and claimed us, the stage manager threatened to throw her off the show. <laughs> I'm very sorry. They're my kids. You can kick me off the show if you like. But he didn't. Mom went on to win her first show. I watched it from my second grade classroom on a giant black and white TV, wheeled in for the occasion. My whole class shouted, Go, Mrs. Sullivan! Even Debbie Royal. <laughs> the next day, Mom was on again, poised to repeat as champion. But when the final Jeopardy answer came up, she made a mistake that has haunted her ever since. The question was easy. Which ethnic group played the biggest part in constructing the Transcontinental Railroad? The Chinese, right? Of course. But for some reason, my mom grabbed her magic marker and wrote, The Japanese. Just like that, in bar rooms across America and in my second grade classroom at Countrywood Elementary School, an old joke instantly became a dagger in the heart. Iceberg, Goldberg, and now Solomon. <laughs> it's still a mystery why our brilliant mom is such an easy question. Perhaps those magic markers really were magic, cursed by the misbehavior of us kids. <laughs> In any event, it taught my sister and me the true difference between icebergs 
and Goldbergs. Icebergs don't have guilt. 